Our final stop in Iran lies just 60 kilometers from Shiraz. These are the colossal walls of Persepolis, one of the mighty cities, the legendary cities of the ancient world. I'm seeing it for the first time. My heart is beating so hard. So this is how they would have come up to this palace, wondering what they were going to see. I'm wondering what I'm going to see. <gasps> Look at this avenue, huge avenue coming across the plain. And it would have led you right up, all the way up to... <sighs> oh my gosh. Persepolis was founded by Darius the Great in 518 BC when Iron Age Britons were still living in wooden hill forts. It was designed only for pomp and pageantry and became the ceremonial capital of the Persian Empire, a beacon of extravagance. What it must have been like to come to see this palace, I mean, the scale of it, it's, it's amazing. Persepolis quite soon became the envied city in the entire world. Is it not passing brave to be a king and ride in triumph through Persepolis? Those lines were written by Christopher Marlowe in the play Tamble in the Great. And on stage in London, if you're in a classical play and you dry, you forget your words. You just say that and the audience will never know that it's just been dropped in. It gives you time to think of your next line. Is it not passing brave to be a king and ride in triumph through Persepolis? With the city in its prime, the Persian Empire ruled over 44% of the world's population, a greater percentage than any other empire in history. So this is a depiction on the wall of all the different parts of the empire, of the great Persian Empire, bringing tribute to the king of the time. So this would be a Mede with his round hat. This would be a Persian with his tall hat, holding hands. This group comes from India, and you can see he's wearing a sari. This lot come from Samarkand. I'm going to Samarkand next, another of the exotic and fabulous places in the world, which was on the Silk Road. This was people coming from all over the place, bringing trade and bringing it through Iran and through Persepolis. These are Greeks, and they've got honeycombs and folded cloth, cups of some sweet nectar, possibly Vratsina. And they're all going upstairs, and they're all bringing their gifts to the king of kings, the Shah and Shah. But sadly, all this celebration and pageantry was not to last. Less than 200 years later, Alexander the Great sacked and looted Persepolis. It took 20,000 mules and 5,000 camels to take away all his spoils, leaving it more or less in the state we see today. Oh, gosh. I wish I could see what it's like. Well, I can. Oh, my heavens. Massive black pillars. Great, beautiful patterned ceiling. With horses' heads up there. Great, stark decorations, but so effective. Oh, and there's the gateway I walked through. Oh, this is marvellous. Oh, I could stand here all day in the midday sun, just staring at this glory. The Iranian state has its problems, and it's not an obvious tourist destination for us in the West. And yet the ordinary and extraordinary people I've met have been welcoming, warm and generous. I met an Iranian man here just today with his family. And they said welcoming signs to me, and he just said, governments. <laughs> That's exactly what I feel. And now, for lust of knowing what should not be known, I take the golden road to Samarkand.